It's a cheese waffle. You take two eggs, you take a little bit of shredded cheese. I don't even put in the almond flour. I just, I like a two ingredient thing. You mm. put it in a waffle iron for like six minutes. And this thing is delicious. It's flavorful. If you are a low carb person like me, it's very bread-like. So it kind of satisfies that desire for bread. You can put stuff in it. Like Jamie will make it with like broccoli and ham, but I never do. I just eat them plain. I think you can make them sweet. I've never made them sweet. I just always have the same kind. And the thing that's weird about the chaffle, and so many people have commented on this, is they're weirdly filling. Like mm. you would think, oh, it's two eggs and a little bit of cheese. It's like eating, you know, like a cheese, like an omelet with cheese. It's more filling. I don't know what it is about maybe the way it's digested in the stomach because the way mm. it's cooked. I don't know. But it's not just me who's noticed this. Many people, dad eats them, our father eats them all the time too. I think mom eats them, mom. I think you have yeah. them sometimes too. Um, they're weirdly filling. And so Congrats. they're a really good, easy thing to make from scratch. Somebody wants to know, can you use a Belgian waffle iron? You can, right? I mean, can't you use any kind of waffle iron? Yeah, I think I think it's just any electric waffle iron. It's just a good idea to like put something on it. I mean, do you like put Pam or something on it to keep it from sticking? Jamie does, but I have to say I don't. Um, I think the cheese makes it come up, but you definitely, if you're gonna get an electric waffle maker, get a non-stick one. Like definitely opt for the non-stick one if you're getting one new. Um, and there's a link on my site to the one that I have uh, if you care, but I think you can get any one. Um, uh, yeah, see, oh, people are putting in all of their, um, uh, like what they do with their chaffles. Oh, this is wonderful. Yeah, eggs are high in protein, they're very filling. Yeah, they are very filling, but this is unusually filling because like I eat three scrambled eggs for breakfast if I don't have a chaffle. And I feel like this is more filling even though it's two eggs instead of three. And I don't think it's just the cheese. I don't know. Um, I bought a fun... oh, go, ahead. go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say a fun know yourself better question because someone just said they cut their own bangs. Is are you someone who would cut your own hair? Or yes. Not? Okay. Because those are two different types of people. Give I would a, not. Give yourself a thumbs up if you would cut your own hair. One of my really good friends cut three inches off her hair yesterday. Wow. And she was going to cut her husband's hair, but he didn't want her to. But she How was willing she do to do it. Back? I don't understand. I, th I, I guess you, I guess there are directions online how you do it. I mean, she has hair like mine. It's like straight and just like, there's no, there's nothing fancy. Right. Um, someone, what says, cheese I have works the, oh, go ahead. someone says, I have a gray streak since I don't dye it. And people think I do it on purpose. Well, you know what I just learned because I read a book about Susan Sontag. You know, Susan Sontag had that like very dramatic thing. Her hairdresser said when she started to go gray, let's leave this gray and then the rest of your hair will seem more naturally dark. Oh, and wow. so she really did dye her hair. That was just, oh, that's that was very, it was just very artful. Yes. Someone says, I've been cutting my own hair for 20 years. Wow. Just and had someone else cut layers. Now that is bold. Yeah. Someone says, nope, I had a pixie cut and it looked disastrous if I did it myself. Yeah, I think that I cut my own hair and my husband's hair for the past two years. Wow. I mean, well, what was it? Did you see the movie Wedding Story? It was a very tender moment. Oh, when marriage was, story? Yeah, marriage what, story. Yeah, yeah, marriage story. Yeah, yeah. When she was cutting his hair. It's very sweet. Oh, um, of course, you know, Adam often cuts Jack's hair. So. That's very impressive. He's watched as many YouTube videos on hair cutting. Someone says, maybe we can discover that hair is less important than we've been led to believe. That is an excellent point. Somebody said, I've been wearing a hat a lot. That is another, there's another approach. If you are just joining, I'm Gretchen Rubin. This is Elizabeth Kraft. We're the host of the Happier with Gretchen Rubin podcast. Today is Ask Us Anything. And we have posed the question to you. Would you cut your own hair? Because we are team, no, we will not cut our own hair. Now, listen, I'm wearing my upholder t-shirt. Oh, um, yeah. Uh, I don't know if being an upholder has anything to do with that. I want to cut my hair. I think this may be uncorrelated. Um, By the way, I'm wearing a World's of Fun t-shirt. I recognize it from the top. Yes. yes. For fun. anyone who anyone who doesn't know, World's of Fun is the amusement park in Kansas City where we have many amazing memories. We even recently we've been going with the uh, grandchildren. Um, so I got this as like a retro uh, t-shirt I got, and I love it. I thought it was a little like cheer for Friday. My That's World's good. That's good. Yes. Yes, um, the world's of fun always is happy. Um, someone says, who has cut their dog's hair? Okay, thumbs up if you give your, if you've groomed a pet. Mm. That's something I had never done before quarantine. Um, uh, oh yeah, oh. people are like, nope, nope, nope. 
Oh, there you go. Somebody's in KC. There you go. Somebody's cut yeah. her husband's hair for 32 years. You should sit down and figure out how much money you've saved. No, that will give you a lot of satisfaction. Um, Gretchen, someone wants to know, is it hard for you to locate books? Um, and you're, cause you have so many books on your shelves. Um, it, they are in a particular order. Um, so no, usually I can find it. Um, I don't, yeah, I can usually find things pretty quickly. Um, so, uh, but that means the, the downside of that is it means it's kind of a hassle to put books away because right. I have to put them away in the right place. And actually with, it's a, it's funny. Um, I've just been thinking about this because with my body and my senses book, I have a whole new kind of growing collection of those books and I haven't organized them yet. And that was the first thing I thought when we kind of got stuck at home, I was like, well, now it's going to be really easy for me to take the time to alphabetize all those books and clear off the shelves and like create a space because I'll have all this time on my hands. But as we've all discovered, yes. it turns out that that's exactly the kind of thing I need to put on my like power hour list because they're just, it's these books, they're right behind me and they're there, but they're not alphabetized. And that's when it starts kind of getting out of control. You have to have some kind of mechanism for finding them, but um, I don't think anybody else could find a book. It kind of like makes sense. It's like, it's like the files of right. basically Frank Weller. It makes sense to me. Yes. Um, but that, as long as it makes sense to you, that's all that matters. Does Jamie have his own section? No, no. And I, but I put the books away. And so um, if he needed it, he, he, I mean, they make sense. Like there's, there's memoir and biography, there's nonfiction, there's fiction. And then there's ones that are like, my Winston Churchill books, my Kennedy books, my my um, Happiness and Good Habits books, my Census books, my color books, my children's literature and young adult literature. Then I have books that are like about format because I, you know, I'm enchanted with format. So I have a whole bunch of books where I just like the look of the book or like the design of the book. Um, like Outer Order, Inner Calm, I, des I did that book because I had been so enchanted by Michael Pollan's food rules and I'd mm. always had it out because I was like, I just love the format of this book. I just love it. And I just couldn't resist writing a book in the same style. Someone uh, says they're organizing, they organize their books by color. They know what color the spine is. Well, that's a certain kind of memory, right? Yes. Because I would never remember what color the spine of a book was. Yes, I think, yeah. Yeah, it looks super cool. I love being in places. I have a friend who organized all her books that way. It looks amazing, but I would not be able to remember that at all. Um, also, I do a thing often where like, I'll read a book from the library and I'll really like it. And I'll think, oh, I should, I should buy this book because I need my own copy. So sometimes I've read a book that's like burgundy, but then the copy that I have is purple. Uh -huh. or confusing. Someone says, how often do you get rid of books? How do you fit them all in a New York City apartment? Well, we, I get rid of a ton of books, give them away to Housing Works. I use the library a ton. So a lot of books I read, but I read them from the library. And um, we have a lot of bookshelves all through our apartment. We have a lot, lot, lot of bookshelves. And I'm constantly going through and getting rid of ones um, that I think that we don't want anymore. So it's like a whole, I spend a lot of time actually managing my books. Um, but it's a, it's a happy time. Yes. Um, during this corona, how do you get books from the library? I, I don't get books from the library. I don't, or if any li I don't think any, at least in our, my, in New York State, I'm sure no libraries are open. No, I'm sure not in California, right? But it, right. But if you have a library card, I think you can use Libby, L I B B Y. Oh, for ebooks and yes. audio. Yes. Yes. If you read ebooks or audiobooks, you should absolutely check out the library because. Also, New York Society Library, which is a little uh, like a library around the corner from my house. I think you can buy a subscription and get all kinds of ebooks and audiobooks and stuff there too. So check out New York Society Library um, because yeah, you can, there's like there's so much now that you can get in digital form. Someone says my son doesn't really like to read, but he's been listening to audiobooks recently, which I think is great. Uh, oh my gosh, like children's books in audio. Get the Mrs. Piggle Wiggle books in audio. Oh my gosh, oh, yeah. brilliant. Ooh, our 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 library in in Connecticut is doing curbside pickup now. Oh, that's a great idea. Wow. Oh, here's a question. Oh, um, here's a question for Gretchen. I, do you abstain from snacking or just snack without sugar? Um, I do snack, um, but I don't. Ha but I I abstain without sugar. So I do snack, so but I don't. Eat, like, snack. you eat a lot of nuts for snacks. You cannot. I was, just saying to, I was just saying to Eliza, how many nuts do we eat in this house? Like. We eat so many nuts. It's like, 
squirrel town here. I mean, we eat so many nuts. Um, you can eat too many nuts. I'm just going to say that. It's like <laughs> yeah. you, can, you can eat them fast and you can eat them. They can, they're very filling. Um, uh, somebody said our library in Orlando just reopened. Oh, yeah. Mrs. Pickle Wiggle. Yay. Um, so I'm Gretchen Rubin. This is Elizabeth Craft. We are the hosts of the Happier with Gretchen Rubin podcast. This is Ask Us Anything. We've established that many people cut their own hair, and this yes. is very impressive. Um, but we need to make an announcement, which is that we, you know, we've, we've been doing Instagram Live every day for two months. We feel like we have, we're through it now. I feel like things are turning into a more normal. Uh -huh. uh, you're, you're able to work more. I'm able to work. It feels like things are kind of calming down in some way. Um, so we are going to switch it to two days a week, Tuesday yes. and Friday. Sometimes on Tuesday, I'll have a guest, like I had Kate Bowler, or I had uh, Dan Harris, or I'll, Elizabeth. And then on Friday, will always be Elizabeth and me um, doing Ask Us Anything. And we will also make sure to do this on the 21st, because, of course, that's the yes. day that we're going to be talking about Me Talk Pretty One Day. Yes, which I was listening to more of this morning. It is just so delightful. It transports me away from my state of quarantine. Right. Well, it's also in Paris, at least part of it. Yeah, and yeah, 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 it's fun. Um, so, um, and by the way, for anyone who's missing out on this every day, you can also join the Happier in Hollywood Facebook group which granted isn't Sarah and me talking live, but every there's a lot of engagement there around the clock, wherever you are in the world. Um, and you can get a lot of um, community feel there. So just search ha Facebook for Happier in Hollywood and we will let you um, join us. Yeah, it's fun. There's a lot of fun conversation there. Um, so now it's time for the accountability check-in. Yes. What are you, what do you want to be held accountable for? What uh, do you get a gold star for? What have you been doing faithfully that you're excited about? And what do you need to know that someone's looking over your shoulder so you can stick to it? Uh, All right, Gretch, well, people come in with that. I just have to read this fun fact. I worked as a Macy's elf the same year as David Sedaris. You know, one of his most famous oh, yes. pieces is about being an elf at Macy's. That, oh my God, I would have given anything to see that. Gosh, um, that, that, that is funny. That's not in this collection, but that's probably one of his most, that may be, be his most famous essay. Um, and then I Amy think, Sedaris is his sister, right? Yes. And yes. she was the, in the fantastic podcast Homecoming, I didn't realize until like she the very She was the boss. Time, she was the boss and she was amazing. Absolutely uh, incredible. With Dave, and was it, uh, what's Swimmer. Dave Swimmer? was the underling. Uh, yeah. It was an, an amazing kind of portrait in power. Um, yeah, yes. so yeah, what a family. But he has a, a sister who's named Gretchen. Yes, cool. yes, yeah. um, he does. Um, yes, well, gold star for me for exercising every day and drinking 100 plus ounces of water every day. Okay, gold star. Uh, and Gretchen, my, my accountability was to take notes for my theoretical novel, which I did take some notes. So I'm going to make that my weekend accountability, too. I want to take some more notes for my novel. If you want to just have, like, free, free associate, and, I, and I'll help you try to remember <laughs> the things you told me, I would love to do that. Because I am the one always saying to you, write that down. I yeah. should have right. It made me, it made me realize I should have just been writing it down myself because I could have presented you with like five pages of notes and I would feel so victorious, but I didn't do that. So, so I'm sorry, but I'll try um, to remember. Greg, all the someone wants just to repeat the Instagram live information. So starting oh. next week, this week, upcoming, it's going to be two days a week, Tuesdays and Fridays, same time. Yes. But also on the 21st, which I believe is a Thursday. Yeah, did that. Someone says, I started a book club with some friends. Excellent. Gold star. Thank you, everyone who's saying thank you to us. This yes. Is the um, someone walked every morning this week. Excellent. Sketching and watercolor painting daily. That's excellent. Oh, wow. Um, uh, I want to stick better to my 120 minutes in nature. I've not been able to nail it every day this week. Well, that's an excellent thing. The weekend's coming up, so maybe you can... Um, Oh, someone says, what is Oh, what has happened to the book you guys were doing with someone else on the Greek mysteries, yeah. some such, from Happier at Home? The Eleusinian Mysteries. And yes. you know, Elizabeth, 
I managed to work the LU City Industries into my book about the body. How did I do that? You will nice. have to wait and see. But yeah, someday, Alyssa, we'll have to, we just drifted away from that project. I know, we so never cool. got it to fruition. I think I wrote like 50 pages, maybe. But... And it was good. I was excited. Yeah. It was in Las Vegas. I just couldn't get it done. Yeah. This happens yeah. sometimes. Yeah, yeah. But I learned a lot about the LU City Mysteries. And what was it? Um, uh, oh, my one of my favorite phrases in all time came out of my research and this is a quite serious phrase that is used which is mystical pigs um because the slaughter of pigs f featured as in part of the kind of prep um and i just i just think mystical pigs it's like it's a great it's, phrase it's a great <laughs> phrase mystical pigs um when would you use that like Mystical pigs were important in the LU City Mysteries. I don't even know if I'm saying LU City incorrectly. That's, yeah. that's like how bad it is. But I mean, that, just don't even get me started because that is like the coolest topic of all time. Um, yeah, Liz, we've got to do that one of these days. Yes. Maybe sure. someday when we're stuck at home for two months or something like that. Right. That would we have can been do a good it. project. Too bad someone didn't ask that a couple months ago. Yeah. Um, okay, so your challenge for the weekend. This is a fun challenge, Alyssa, don't you think? Yes, yes, fun being the operative word. Fun being the operative word. The, your challenge is to have some true fun this weekend. So true fun is not fun for the whole family. True fun is not, this is good for me, therefore I find it fun. This is, I'm really looking forward to it and I find it delicious every single minute. If it is a guilty pleasure, that is fun, you know, you, but you don't want to do something that's going to be fun now that's going to make you feel bad later. That's the only right. thing. If that is not fun, that is like, right. that is making a trade-off that in the end you regret. But think of something that you would really look forward to it, honestly look forward yep. to it, and just maybe it's a TV show episode that you want to rewatch. Um, mm. To me, I love rereading books, and so for me, that's always like a like I can, that's a treat. I can oh, I'm always like oh, I'll go reread like, you know, something like His Majesty's Dragon, which is like a book that I just love and that I often read for comfort. Um, my fun is haven't read um, that, um, no reading. Bit. My fun will be reading something that I feel like reading, like not for work, but just for fun by the fire pit with a glass of wine. That's my. I love that partly because I realized, and I've talked about this on the show, that I always read on vacation. I don't watch yes. TV. And so when I'm reading by the fire pit, I sort of feel like I'm on vacation. So, Well, I think this is why Dutch House is a good choice because it's, it's not a frivolous book. It's not, like a, it's not like a popcorn book where you're sort of like, it just, you know, and I love books like that. So I would never, yes. I'm not saying that to disparage those kind of books because I love those books. This is like a book where you feel like you're really, like you're getting that high pleasure, not just the easy pleasure, but the high pleasure of reading. And yet it's also a page turner. It's also the kind of book where it's like, you are honestly, like I like a book Hours where pass. every minute, I'm like at any minute of the day, I'm like, ooh, maybe I have 10 minutes to read this book before I have to leave. Or, you know, maybe I can like do it now quickly. Where you feel like there's no time that's not fun because you've yeah. always been reading the book. And that's yeah. how I was with this book. Like, and I was like, honestly, like, what's going to happen? Like, I just so was wanted to stay in that world with it. And so it has that transporting quality. Um, oh, someone's going to research new clothes and buy themselves a piece. That's fun. I enjoy doing that. Oh, somebody likes His Majesty's Dragon. Oh, I love that book so much. It's His Majesty's Dragon by no Naomi Novik, if you haven't read it. It's hard to describe. There are dragons, but in a real world, uh, Napoleonic Wars, it's, it's like, the more I describe it, the less good it sounds, but it's mm. amazing. Um, but- uh, Someone ordered a cheese and charcuterie platter for tomorrow. That okay. sounds fun. Well, Lizzie, you were ordering some clothes for your tops for your meeting, and you said there were some amazing sales, right? Oh, amazing sales. Yes, everywhere. Um, Everywhere has sales. So yes, yeah. if you're buying clothes, look around because you might find whatever you want for like 70 or 80% off. Um, somebody says reading outside in lovely weather is vacation. Yeah. Well, you moved to the right place, Elizabeth. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. So next week we will not be here Monday, but we will be here Tuesday. Yeah. 
Um, and so have a wonderful weekend. Have fun. We will check in with yes. you on Tuesday to make sure people had their fun. Um, and in the meantime, let's keep our hands clean and our minds clear. Have a great Bye. weekend. Bye.